In this module, you'll learn about the different study types or study designs used in clinical epidemiology, how to identify them, and what their main strengths and weaknesses are. You'll also learn how the type of clinical question you're asking, such as intervention, harm, diagnosis, prognosis, or frequency, determines the most appropriate study type to use. Clinical studies can be categorised in a variety of different ways, and sometimes these categories can overlap with one another. Firstly, they can be divided into studies that are qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative studies produce numerical data, that is, they deal with numbers. Measures of height or weight are examples of numerical data. Data collected from scales that produce a score are also quantitative. For example, scales for the level of perceived pain. So it's not what you are measuring, such as something objective or subjective, that determines whether your data is quantitative or qualitative, but whether or not your results are produced as numbers. Qualitative studies do not involve numerical data and use methods such as focus groups, interviews and participant observation to collect data, usually in the form of text to explore in depth and breadth things such as patient motivations, opinions and concerns. For example, a focus group that explored the barriers to child vaccination in a group of parents would be a qualitative study. Qualitative studies are often hypothesis generating compared with quantitative studies that are often hypothesis testing. In this unit, we're going to concentrate on quantitative studies. Quantitative studies can be further divided into studies that are descriptive and those that are analytic. Descriptive studies describe how common something is, such as a particular disease or risk factor. Descriptive studies might also describe the course or natural history of a disease. Descriptive studies don't try to examine relationships between different variables measured in a study. That is what analytic studies do. For example, if we measured how many people in the population had diabetes, that would be a descriptive study. However, if we examined the relationship between ethnicity and diabetes, then this would be an analytic study. In practice, some studies may have both descriptive and analytic aspects. For example, you might have a survey that reports how common diabetes is in the population, the descriptive component but also reports the relationship between particular characteristics such as age, sex and ethnicity with diabetes, the analytic component. Analytic studies can also be divided into the two broad categories of experimental and observational studies. Experimental studies are so called because they are similar to experiments in a lab. Just like an experiment, we intervene in some way and then try to measure the effect of what we have done. Randomised controlled trials are an example of an experimental study where we randomise one group to a treatment or intervention, randomise another group to a placebo or control and then follow both groups to see what happens. The other main group of analytic studies are observational studies. In these studies researchers don't intervene in what is happening to study participants but rather observe what happens in the natural setting. Examples of observational studies include cohort studies, case control studies, cross-sectional studies and case series. Unlike experimental studies that are always analytic, observational studies can be either descriptive or analytic or a combination of both. Another way of grouping studies is to talk about primary studies and secondary studies. The term primary study means a single study and includes all the types of studies we have mentioned so far, such as RCTs, cohort studies and case control studies. Secondary studies, or systematic reviews, collect and combine the results of several individual primary studies together. Here is a list of study types that you'll learn about in this module. They've been organised in order of the level of evidence they provide, with the highest level at the top being systematic reviews, followed by randomised controlled trials, and then different types of observational studies. 
after you've learned about the main features of these different study types in the next couple of videos. We will revisit this hierarchy, as you'll discover that the order of study types according to level of evidence can change a little according to the particular clinical question you are asking.